Hey, welcome to Make Your Body Work. I'm Dave Smith. Let's get started. I'm going to get you to take a step, big wide step on your mat. Today, you just need your mat and your water bottle as per usual. I want you to take a wide enough step that you just start to feel a little bit of a stretch on the inside of your thighs. And we're not going for a big stretch here. I don't want to get anyone to pull any uh, groin muscles or anything, just to widen up that you start to feel a little tiny bit of a stretch. Then I'm going to get you to go into a bit of a forward bend. And when I say forward bend, I've talked to you about this before, we want to fold like a book. And folding like a book requires us to have a very flat back. So if you notice, right now, I'm feeling a huge stretch in my hamstrings. And notice where my head position is. My head is nowhere near the floor. I could forward round and all of a sudden my head drops towards the floor. Instead I'm going to work my lower back muscles, keeping my back nice and flat, pushing my butt up and back. Really feel that stretch on the back of your legs, your hamstrings, and on the inside of your thighs. Hands can go on your knees, on your shins. As you bend forward, maybe a little bit lower, working towards your ankles, still maintaining a flat low back. Right now we're stretching our legs and warming up our lower back muscles, our erectors they're called. Take a big breath in with me. Big breath in. Exhale. Fold like a book. Butt pushes up. Try it again. Big breath in. Exhale. Folding a little bit deeper. Butt pushing up. And good. Nicely. You can come on in to the center. That just prepares our hamstrings a little tiny bit. We're going to go into an airplane dive. Airplane dive looks like this. Let's go hands up. Arms parallel to the floor. I'm going to turn to the side here. Let's go standing on your right foot. Float that left foot. And we're going to go left heel comes up as our chest comes down. And I just want you to come fall, let your chest fall forward until your left heel stops moving. So if my left heel stops moving way down here, I want my chest up here. So I'm in a nice straight line from heel to the top of my head. And come on back up. We're going to repeat this on the same side. Here we go. Left heel up chest comes down, chest only moves as my heel moves, and then come on back up, challenging your balance. Check out your arms, parallel to the floor, forward bending, heel comes up, chest comes down, right back up. So again, you should feel a whole lot of work in that standing hamstring, chest down, heel up, squeezing your left butt cheek right back up. We're going to try one more here. Heel comes up, chest comes down. Again, our low back muscles, those erectors are really working to keep it nice, straight torso. Come on back up. Hands come down. Notice a little bit of work in your shoulders. It surprises me every time. As many of these airplane dives as I've done, every time I'm shocked at how much work it is in the shoulders. Let's go. Left foot's planted, right heel's floating, and back up to standing up nice and tall. Arms parallel to the floor. Chest down, heel up. Try it again. Ideally with our breathing, we're moving with the breath. So it's a breath in as we come down, exhale as we come up. Hopefully you're holding your balance better than I am. Here we go. Try it again. Breath in on the way down. Exhale on the way up. Again, breath in on the way down. Exhale on the way up. Let's go again. One more here. Breath in on the way down. Exhale on the way up. Feel your shoulders. Again, should be getting a fair bit of work in your shoulders. I'll get you to come to your back of your mat. Widen out your feet so your feet are about hip width apart. And then again, we're going to forward fold, starting off folding like a book. So we've got that hamstring stretch, low back is active, hands are maybe on your knees. And then if you've got a healthy spine, no issues with your discs, you can go ahead and round on forward until your hands maybe touch your shoes, your ankles, whatever it is, the floor. Go ahead and we'll walk out into a plank. Once you're in a plank, we're just going to hold a straight arm plank. Quite often we extend this into an extended plank. We're going to hold this today. Check out my wrists right beneath my shoulders. I'm going to lower myself down, tricep push up, chest touches, and then I'm going to peel myself up, squeezing my glutes. Here if you want, 
If it's more comfortable, you can come into a cobra position. So I've got the support of my thighs, my knees touching the mat. If you want to stay toes curled under and we're into a bit of more of an upward facing dog, go ahead. And then we're going to push back into downward facing dog. Walk your heels out one at a time. Trying to touch your heel to the floor. Bend one knee, touch the opposite heel to the floor. And then we're going to come back out into our plank. Squeeze your glutes, belly button pulls in. Slowly come on down, chest touches. Curl on up. Whatever version you're in here, I want you to think long neck. So shoulders down away from your ears. Glutes squeezing. And then push on up. Right now, I want you to think about pushing your hips up to the ceiling. Like we're making a little bit of a pyramid out of our body, a triangle. Hips up, heels down. Go ahead and walk those heels out. One, two, three, four. Let's do six, five, six. One more. We're into a plank. If you want to come down onto your knees and lower yourself down, go ahead. Or you can be on your toes. Touch. Long neck, shoulders down, shoulder blades back. Squeezing your glutes. And then push on up. Go for a walk out one, two, three, four, five, six, and come on down onto your knee. And let's come right back up. Whole lot of work in your arms, triceps, chest, shoulders, and you should come to your back, your mat. Nice tall posture here. Shoulders back, chin tucked in, chest up. We're going to go into a, a lunge. When we go into this lunge, maintain that nice tall torso. Straighten out your back leg. I've got my right knee bent, knee over top of my heel. Straight back left leg. Looking for a little bit of stretch here in my left hip flexor. If you don't feel a stretch here, I always give the same instruction. We want to straighten out that left leg a little bit more and then bend this right knee a little bit more. The more you bend here, the more you straighten back here, the more stretch we're going to get in this hip and go ahead and push on back, ideally getting one big step all the way back, feet side by side. Let's try it on the other side. Tall chest. Go ahead into your lunge. Bend your front knee, straighten out your back leg. Your front foot, 90% of your weight should be into your heel. You could wiggle your toe if you chose. What that tells me is that you've got a nice position of knee over top of heel as opposed to knee over top of toe. We want a wide, wide lunge here, a long lunge. So we want knee over top of heel, weights on your heel. And ready? We're going to go lunging all the way back, one big stride, feet side by side. Let's try it again. Weights into that front heel, straighten out your back knee, chest is nice and tall, bend the front knee. Should feel your thigh working, should feel your back thigh working just as it tries to straighten out your back knee. And then let's lunge all the way back. Try it again. Lunging forward, chest up, shoulders back, bend the front knee, straighten out the back knee. Feel that stretch in your right hip flexor. And let's push on back. Quick little shake out of your legs. Nicely done. Today's workout, we're doing a circuit. Um, it's going to be six different stations, four exercises, six sets, 45 seconds a piece. I'm going to show you the first one, and then we'll get started. Can I get everyone to do this with me? I want you to come on down. And we're going to come onto our bums. I've got my hands down right underneath my shoulders. I like to go fingers out to the side. And then I just want you to come up into a bit of a bridge position. And it's a bit of a broken bridge. You notice my hips are down a little bit lower. So quite often when we're in a bridge or a tabletop, we're aiming for up here. This one, we're going to have our hips down a little bit. We're definitely not hanging out here. So we do want to squeeze our glutes. Everyone's up here with me. Level number one is going to look like this. For 45 seconds, you're going to be squeezing your glutes, raising your hips up to the ceiling. Feel a lot of work in your shoulders. Feel a lot of work in your back side of your body, your posterior side. Level number two will look like this. It's going to be a kick. A kick. And so on. A lot of work in your hamstrings, again, in your glutes. Level number three, it is a challenge. It's going to look like this. We're going to kick and touch. Switch hands. 
kick and touch, keeping your hips up. We're never down here. 45 seconds. Are you ready? Right after that 45 seconds, we're going to go into a lunging exercise. So I'll get you to get ready for that, to stand up immediately. We're going to transition quite quickly into the next exercise. So enough talking. Here we go. Three, two, one. And let's do it. We're going to do our crab position. It's a crab kick, an opposite crab kick. Hips up, touch, hips up. Feel your shoulders really working. Your shoulders are supporting a huge percentage of your body weight right now. Hips up, trying to make as close to that tabletop as you possibly can. Touch, touch. And it is a quick set. We're used to doing 60 second intervals. Today we've got a lot of material to go through. So it's just a 45 second. We got time for three more. One, two, three, and come on up. We're gonna go into a lunge. Check this out with me. I want you to do it with me. We got right foot forward, 90 degree angle, chest up. We're gonna take left foot comes and touches side by side, and then we're gonna lunge left foot forward. Left foot touches side by side, reverse lunge. Those of you who are more advanced, take a look. It's gonna be a step through into a lunge. Step all the way back into a lunge. Try it again, step through into a lunge. Notice what I'm doing with my arms here. Got a little bit of momentum gaining from my arm swing. Push all the way back. Let's try it again. All the way forward, all the way back. Try it again, all the way forward, all the way back. And let's switch legs, left legs down. We got that left lunge, ready? And all the way forward, all the way back, or you can stop in the middle, whatever's comfortable for you. Skipping through that middle matching of your feet really challenges your balance. And I know it's quite a challenge, especially on that reverse lunge. Make sure you get a nice long stride. Weight's always in your front heel. So right now my weight's into my right heel, weight's into my left heel, right heel, left heel. Let's try it again. Heel, heel. Beautifully done. I'm gonna get you to take your mat. If you're near a wall, you wanna pull it away from the wall. We need a little bit of space for this next one. We're gonna go into a straight arm plank. Everyone with me, straight arm plank. Hips nice and low, squeeze your glutes. It's gonna take a look like this. We're gonna bend our knees, a little jump to the side. Bend your knees, jump to the other side of your mat. Hips staying low the whole time. A little bend in the knees, jump, jump. Jump. You can do a stationary plank if you like. Jump. Jump. If you want a challenge, come on down into an elbow plank. Jump. 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 Very quick, first time through. Next exercise. Level number one, stand beside a wall. We're going to be balancing on our right leg, the inside leg. Bend on forward until your chest is parallel to the floor. Feel free to hold onto the wall if you like. I'm gonna tuck my knee in. Level number one, holding onto my wall. And then I'm gonna extend, still holding onto the wall. Try it, level number two. No holding onto the wall. Double arm reach, tuck in. Double arm reach, tuck in. Next level difficulty, take a look. Staying low, it is a challenge. Touch my toe, reach. We've got an opportunity to try it on the other side. Let's try it. Left foot's planted. Bend over, nice flat back. Touch the toe, holding onto the wall, not holding onto the wall. Many levels of difficulty here, reach. Come on in, touch. Stay low, reach. Right now your standing calf muscle, your standing glute is working. Low back should be working. Touch. Keep your chest low. Reach. Touch. Reach. Stay low. Chest down, parallel to the floor. Reach. And that's it. We've got a 45 second break. Grab your water. 
First time through, I know it's moving pretty quickly. Now you know the exercises. You'll be ready for it this time. We got our crab kick, followed by our four backward lunge, followed by our plank lateral hops, followed by our standing kick back with a toe touch. That's a mouthful. Let's get set up. Crab kick, hands down, heels ready to take our body weight. Ready? And let's go. We're up. We've got a touch, hips high, touch, hips high. I can't say that enough. The more we squeeze our glutes and bring our hips up, the more we're working the posterior side of our body. You're going to notice this is a huge ab exercise as well as a shoulder exercise. Touch, touch. Levels difficult here are determined by the height of your hips as well as your balance. We want to have a nice slow controlled movement. You can pick up your pace only once your balance is there. If you find you're falling all over the place, keep it a nice slow pace until you really nail that balance. Here we go, right foot forward, left foot back, weight on your front heel. We've got a lunge. Lunge all the way through if you can. Lunge forward. Weights in the front heel. Lunge all the way back. Ready? I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit here. Make sure your front knee is at a 90 degree angle with each lunge. If we're stopping short of that 90 degree angle, we're kidding ourselves. We want to really work on that depth of the lunge. That front thigh coming parallel to the floor. Good, let's go again. And switch. Left foot forward, right foot back. Here we go. Testing out your balance. It's a great exercise because it really challenges our stabilizer muscles. Specifically right now, my left leg is the one that's in the middle that's always planted down. That leg has a ton of little stabilizers around my major joints, around my ankle, my knee, my hip, and they are working to keep me in this nice straight line, to keep me nice and balanced. Keep on going. 90 degrees. One more each. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Nicely done. We're into a plank. Choose your level difficulty. Isometric straight arm plank or a plank hop straight arm, or a plank hop on your elbows. Let's go. Hop. Hip slow. The tendency here is to turn this into a downward facing dog and getting our butt piking up to the ceiling. Don't let it happen. Hip slow. Clear your mat on every hop. So you got to really generate some force to get those hips over to the side. That's it. We got two more. Here we go for one and two. Nicely done. Thighs, I don't know if you can feel it. I certainly can. Standing on that right leg. Four bend. Here we go. Flat low back. Touch your toe if you feel comfortable. Kick that left heel. Reach those two arms. Touch. Reach. And you'll notice this one is slow and steady as well. Reach. Make your body into a capital letter T. Kick that heel back. Reach those fingertips forward. Touch. Reach. And we've got to switch. Left foot's planted. Chest comes down as close to parallel to the floor as possible. Touch. Reach. And you'll notice my speed here. I'm probably getting five, maybe six repetitions in this 45 seconds. It is not a lot. Really focusing on balance. Really focusing on getting my heel up and my arms up, straightening out my joints. 
So as I reach here, straight, straight elbows, kick that straight knee back, and reach, and done. 45 second break, grab your water. Today's exercises, it's pretty amazing. You'll notice they're, they're not super high intensity. We're not, you know, running huge intervals, really trying to elevate our heart rate. But these are all ones that use so much muscle. I don't know if you can feel your heart rate going a little bit. Mine certainly is. Plus, we're getting so much muscle endurance involved here. Low back, glutes, abs, hugely today. We're ready in three, two, one, hips up, crab kick, one, two, hips up, three, if you decide to pick up the pace, hips need to be up, you're cheating yourself if you let those hips drop to the floor and really go quickly through the exercise, I'd rather hips up, a little bit slower pace, again, feel your abs strengthening, shoulders, glutes, low back, maybe hamstrings. Those of you who are really flexible, you can think about having a straight knee when you go into this kick. Touch, straight knee. Those of us that are a little less flexible, maybe a little bend in that knee, help yourself out. Nice, flip on over. We've got a right foot forward, and let's do it. 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Nice, consistent breath. I exhale for my power. Exhale to get that power to push forward or back. So here it's an exhale, breath in. Exhale, push back. Exhale, push forward, breath in. Exhale, push back. Good. Got time for another. Push. And let's switch. Left foot's down, right foot's back. Go ahead, check out your lunge. Is it a 90 degree angle? Again, this one's an easy one to just power through. Without bending that front knee, it gets quite easy. Bend that front knee, bend that front knee. Hip drops down, left hip drops down, right butt cheek down, left butt cheek. Your thighs should be burning right now. If they're not, Challenge the depth and the distance of your lunge. A little bit longer lunge. A little bit deeper lunge. Last one. Push. Great job. We're into our plank. On your elbows or your toes. Here we go. You got your hop. Hips staying low. Clearing your mat each time. And I know it is tough to clear that mat, especially if you're on your elbows. Do your best. If you find you're not able to clear the mat, go up onto your straight arms. Almost there. Two more. And a ton of work. Let's go for it. Plant that foot. Chest comes down. Come on in and touch. And reach. So we're thinking straight, straight arms, straight legs here. My standing leg, I know you're probably not watching right now, but my standing leg is quite straight without hyperextending. We don't want to turn this into a squat or a lunge and let our quad take over. But we don't want to hyperextend and sacrifice any safety of our knee joint. Chest down, touch, reach and kick. Is anyone else out there sweating right now? I certainly am. Arms up, arms locked out, push that heel back. Touch, 
make it a goal for yourself. How many of these can you do in a row without touching your floating foot down or out without grabbing onto the wall beside you? Can you do two in a row? Can you do three? Can you do 45 seconds worth? One last one. Kick and reach. And nice work. Water break. We got another time through. Any of you that have been training with me for a while, you know I'm all about workout efficiency. Go to the gym and watch people do an exercise, sit back, go to the water fountain, chat with their buddies. Becomes very inefficient exercise. We're going today. This actual workout component, it'll just take over 20 minutes to get it done. But it is intense if you're pushing yourself. Let's get ready for crab kick. Come on up and let's do it. We got a kick. One, two, hips up. Hips up. Again, I can't say it enough. This one gets very, very easy. If your hips start dropping to the floor, take a look at your stomach. It should almost be that tabletop position. I get, like I said at the start of this exercise, it'd be very hard to hold a perfect tabletop and do the kick portion. Whoa, lost my balance. Try your best. That's what our goal is, is to get those hips up into a tabletop. Might not happen perfectly, and that's okay. Touch, touch, touch. Here we go, alternating lunge. Let's go for it, chest is up nice and tall. Lunge forward, exhale, lunge back. Forty-five seconds on one leg, forty-five seconds on the other. So you notice we're doing four exercises today. Two of them require both sides being done for forty-five seconds. So it becomes six sets in one circuit. Push. Push, push, come on, and switch, left foot down, let's go, chest is up, again, I can't emphasize enough, 90 degrees in that front knee, 90 degrees in that front knee, one big step forward, one step back, at this point in the routine, your heart rate should be going. If not, same thing, I want you to sit down a little deeper, lunge a little bit further. The longer your lunge, the more muscles required or the more effort required to push all the way back. Sit down, push, push, push. Nice, almost there, last one each side. One and two, great job. Thighs should be burning. Let's go elbow plank. And you can hold here if you like, isometric, or you can hop. Hips low. Again, not, not a downward dog. I know it would feel so good to pike that butt up to the ceiling. Don't let it happen. We've got 20 seconds left. Get those feet across. Get those feet across again. Push. Push, push, come on, push, that's it. Let's do two more, one, two, and we're up in a kickback. Chest down, parallel to the floor, flat low back. Go ahead, if you choose, touch that foot. Kick and reach, straight limbs, make yourself into a capital T. Kick and reach. Requires so much balance, so much strength in your core, core being glutes, low back, and abs. Touch, chest stays low. Kick and reach, and let's switch. Last one, 
touch, kick and reach, touch, kick and reach, touch, kick and reach. Remember, arms straight forward, elbows locked out. Our goal is to make our entire body parallel to the floor, much like an airplane dive. We got time for two more. Come on in. Touch. And then we've got our kick and reach. Last one, nice, slow and controlled. Touch, kick and reach. Wow. Great job. You've got time for a water break. Go ahead. And then we'll go through some stretching. Awesome work today. You might notice some muscles that you don't work quite as often. Low back is a common one. So many people with low back pain, rarely do we take time to strengthen our lower back. And you'll notice today was one of those days we certainly did. Let's go. Hip flexor lunge. Right heel comes forward right underneath my right knee. Chest is up. I like to go hands on my hips, pushing this left hip forward and down. Most of the workouts we do here do involve our hips contracting, our hips flexing. Today is no different in our crab kick. Every kick, we had our hip working, so we're going to stretch that muscle out now. Feel your heart rate. Take a big breath in. Exhale nice and slowly. Heart rate just de decreased a little bit. Try it again. Exhale slowly. Get you to switch over opposite side. Knee above heel, chest up nice and tall, shoulders back. Push your right hip forward and down. And now we slowly breathe. Every exhale, push that back hip forward and down. We want to be active here. I know in, when it comes to stretching, quite often we get so used to the same stretches, it's easy just to kind of go through the motions. Yeah, I set up in a hip flexor lunge and I'll kind of kneel here. Let's get the benefit of being here. Push that right hip forward and down, like you're trying to go into the splits. I'm going to go back to the first side. We're going to add a crescent pose to this low lunge or this hip flexor lunge. So you can hang out here. If this is enough for you, by all means. If you want a little bit more, hands up to the ceiling. Take a look up to your fingertips. Straighten out your elbows. Push your left hip forward and down. Feel a very intense stretch through the front of your left hip. And let's switch. Adding these crescent pose arms gives a little bit of roundness or a little bit of a backward bend that'll stretch through our abdominals as well as stretch into our hip flexor. Fingertips up, take a look up to your fingertips only what's comfortable so you don't need to backward bend too far if you notice I've got just a little tiny bit of a backward bend and I'll tell you I'm feeling that right hip flexor that's it and come on down onto our knees cat and dog let's get some relief for our back that we just worked so hard go ahead cat position and then opposite breath dog position cat position Squeeze your pelvis forward. So take a look. My butt pushes forward. My chin tucks in. My back rounds up. And then I do the opposite. Chin comes forward. Butt pushes back. Belly drops. Try it again. Releasing tension in our back. Giving a stretch through our abdominals. Try it again. dog or camel position. Let's do one more. Big rounding here, squeezing your butt cheeks forward, pelvis moves forward, arch up, and then on your opposite breath, into dog. Excellent. Let's move right back into child's pose. 
one of our staples here. Pretty much every workout, child's pose is beneficial, relaxing, helps lower the heart rate, stretches through the upper body. We've got straight arms. Take a look at your arms. Make sure those elbows are straight. Make sure your forearms are off the floor. Take a look at your thumbs. Thumbs are about three inches apart. Forehead comes and touches. With your forehead on the floor, forearms off the floor, think about taking a big breath in, reaching forward, stretching those arms forward, and then on your exhale, hips go back towards your heels. Really nicely done. Let's go ahead and I'll get you to take your mat and you can fold it out. Double thickness here. We'll lie down face up, knees facing up, and we're going to do a spine twist. It's a little bit of a stretch for our, our low back again, but predominantly a glute stretch. I've got my right knee crossed over my left knee, left hand onto the outside of your right knee. We're just going to start to drop those knees over to the side. Simultaneously, let's go right hand up. Drop it all the way over so that your right arm's completely flat on the floor, including your right shoulder. Take a look at your right shoulder. If your right shoulder's up off the floor, can I get you just to let your knees come back up away from the floor and get that right shoulder down, and then you can start to push those knees towards the left again. So right now, right arm's flat on the floor, right shoulder's on the floor. Take a look over your right shoulder. Knees are dropping over to the left. My left hand is pulling those knees to the floor. I feel a huge stretch down the right side of my body. Anywhere from your right shoulder, your right pec, down the right side of your back, and then especially into your right glute, maybe even a little bit into the top portion of your right hamstring. And let's switch. S opposite motion, right hand up, grab onto those knees, drop them over to the right, left hand up, drop it all the way down to the left, left shoulder flat on the floor. On your exhale, use that right hand to pull your knees a little bit further down to the right side of your body. Come on up, nicely done. I'm going to finish in Japanese position again. A little stretch for the quads. Sitting back on my heels, my knees are aligned with my hips, are aligned with my heels, are aligned with my toes. If this isn't comfortable, go ahead. A little weight forward, starting to work your weight back into your hips. Eventually being able to close those knees out, getting the flexibility through your quads and your actual knee joint to be able to sit up nice and tall resting on your heels. Thank you again for the efforts today. Hopefully you feel great. I've got another awesome workout coming for you in a couple days. I'll see you soon. Take care.